Hello everybody, Tornado Soup here. So I wasn't planning on this video. In fact, I was actually planning a different MCU Spider-Man video that I'll just have to get to another time now. But that means this probably won't be super polished, and I'm sorry about that. But I wanted to make sure that I got this out there before it was all old news. Though, you know, I mean, by the time this actually uploads, the whole deal could change, but whatever, it's fine. Things will be fine. Anyway, the news about the Sony-Disney deal involving Spider-Man breaking down is just about as heartbreaking as comic book movie news can be. I've said it before on the channel. There will be a link in the video somewhere. I don't know, maybe right right-hand corner or at the end or in the description. I don't know. I, I don't really like Spider-Man being an Avenger. And Far From Home just kind of cemented that. But still... Seeing the webhead teaming up with all those characters on screen, it... I mean, I can only imagine what little five-year-old Raimi trilogy watching me would say if he heard about it. The fact that it looks like those days are in the rearview mirror now? Man, it sucks. Still, there's some pretty big positives in the whole situation. I know it might not feel like it, but it's still important to sift through all the po negative stuff and find the silver lining. First off, Tom Holland and John Watts are still attached to the next two Spidey flicks. These two, especially Holland, clearly have a love for this character. So not only do we have some security in the creatives, it also means we don't have to deal with yet another reboot. Now, as for the heads at Sony, well, sure, they've kind of gotten in the way before. The production of The Amazing Spider-Man 2 was marred with studio interference, which resulted in... Well, it resulted in a movie that's kind of a mess. That's despite the fact that Mark Webb is actually a pretty talented filmmaker with an understanding of how to craft stories around earnest, real people. Both Andrew Garfield and Emma Stone have shown themselves to be some of the most versatile actors of their generation. And yet, Sony got in the way of what should have been at least a really good movie, if not an excellent one. So then, what's the positive in there? I mean, the video is literally called the positives of the death of MCU Spidey, or something like that, I haven't totally decided. Well, when you look at how the studio interfered, it becomes clear that their fingerprints were mostly all over what would have been building for a shared universe. All the villains and secret experiments were results of an attempt at a shared universe. But with the new era of Spidey flicks coming straight out of the MCU, most of that is done. For the most part, the Sinister Six have been set up in Homecoming and Far From Home. And there's quite a bit of room to squeeze Oscorp and the Goblin stuff in there too. Plus, Sony already put out Venom last year, which did all the heavy lifting for the symbiote stuff. It wouldn't be that hard to launch a shared universe out of this now because it's kind of already in one. It's also fair to say that last year, Sony put out two of the best Spider-Man stories on screen ever. And no, I'm not talking about Venom. I was, I, I mean, the video game and into the spider-verse those were those were what i meant that venom venom no not venom um but anyway while those two can't be compared one-to-one -one with the live action stuff it at least shows there's producers at sony that are willing to let the story do its thing and be the best it can be it would have been easy for the guys in charge to insist on another quick cheap spidey game or a dumbed down animated movie I mean, they've certainly done those kinds of things in the past, but they didn't. It became about more than just making money, and they won an Oscar for it. It's not perfect, sure, like I said, animated movies are vastly different from live-action ones, and the same goes triple for video games, but I think it should restore at least a little confidence in them. And as for Kevin Feige not being a part of it... <sighs> I've seen a lot of things online saying that Feige is basically the end-all be-all for a successful superhero movie. I mean, sure, he produced three super movies that grossed over a billion dollars this year alone. And he is the guiding hand behind much of the MCU's success. But it's also fair to note that he was an executive producer on the first Amazing Spider-Man. And Spider-Man 3. And Man-Thing. And Ang Lee's Hulk and both Fantastic Four movies, and Thor, Tales of Asgard. Probably didn't even know that one was a thing. And let's not forget he was a co-producer on Elektra, 
and Daredevil. Sure, he didn't have as much power and influence on those movies, but it does show that his name doesn't automatically mean it's quality. I can practically guarantee that if you didn't like what Sony did with Spider-Man, then you disliked at least one of those movies I just listed. I'm not saying this to diminish anything that Feige has done, just to prove that, yeah, just because he's a producer doesn't mean the movie will be good. Finally, if Spidey isn't in the MCU, then it allows his story to breathe. It allows him to become his own character, instead of Iron Man's sidekick. I mean, practically every conflict he's had in the MCU has revolved around Tony Stark. Not around Spidey, and certainly not around Peter Parker. He gets smothered by the need to cram him into a spot in the universe he doesn't belong in. Because let's face it, a lot of it's marketing. Sure, a Spider-Man movie will sell well, and an Avengers movie is basically guaranteed at least a billion dollars at this point. But if you put the two together, you're practically printing money yourself. A Spider-Man story is about humor and heart and growing up and struggling through everyday problems. It's about being relatable to the everyman. And while the MCU's Spidey has had some of that, his inclusion in the Avengers also kind of takes away a lot of it too. If Spidey's out of this universe, well, he can go back to being the street-level character he was created to be, instead of being a near-cosmic level one. In the end, yeah, I'll miss having Spidey in the MCU, especially since he's leaving on the eve of the Fantastic Four's arrival. And I suppose story-wise it could end up more than a little weird too. Is Peter just going to forget about Iron Man all of a sudden? Is he just never going to bring up Happy again or mention how he went to space? And even if he's not meant to be an Avenger, Spidey has always been a good team-up hero. So making that impossible stings too. Yet there are negatives in this whole deal. And maybe the franchise will hurt a little because of what's happening. Maybe Spider-Man Broken Home or Spider-Man Home Alone Lost in New York or whatever it's going to be called won't be as good as the last two. But I think it's important to remember that there's a positive side to this too. There's no use in getting angry or cursing out somebody on Twitter. There's more to life than that. So let's try to look on the bright side of all of this. There are some good things that can come out of Spidey getting kicked out of the MCU too. I mean, besides, we don't even know that that's what's going to happen. Maybe the deal could change. Maybe Disney and Sony can work things out. Anyway, that's all I've got for now. Now I want to see what you guys think about this whole de ordeal down in the comments section. Hopefully I'll see you next time. I've been Tornado Soup. Goodbye, everybody.